Hello, I'm Pastor Keith Mazingo of Metropolitan Community Church of Baton Rouge. I want to thank you for clicking on the video of our worship message. Please go to our Facebook page at facebook.com slash mccbr to see the entire worship service, including prayers, special music, and communion. You're also welcome to join us every Sunday morning at 11 a.m. for worship service. Stay tuned after the message for information on how you can stay in touch with us. Well, last week we started a sermon series, an Advent sermon series, about songs for the ages. Reverend Vicki Gibbs, who was here last week with us, started that series with the Song of Mary, and she talked a lot about that all through her sermon and how we are involved in that song. And that story is sort of interwoven into this. In fact, our story, as Kelly just pointed out to our children, uh, those children of us older to that, uh, that happened in the middle of another story, the story of Elizabeth and Zechariah. I do want to say that um, last week I was so blessed, what we really were blessed to have both Sean Thomas with us and Reverend Vicki Gibbs, and um, Reverend Vicki wanted to meet you all and get a feeling for what you wanted, and where do we go from here kind of thing, and I thought that was so important since we just did that ourselves with our, our uh, stewardship campaign to talk about where we've been and where we're going. And um, I know she was a little lonely because her, her partner in life, uh, Cassandra White, was back in, in Houston leading the gospel choir on Sunday morning because their gospel choir sings on Sunday morning. By the way, just so you know a connection, I didn't tell you this last week, and I probably should have. I meant to, and I forgot it. Um, but with Reverend... Um, Vicki Gibbs. She has worked for our denomination and she has been a blessing to me personally for many years um, in working behind the scenes. As you can tell, she's a quiet person generally. She listens a lot. And Lord knows I kept her up on Saturday night really like her listening to me because I'm a talker too. You know. But she was Pastor Vicki to me. But those of you that have been around for a while know that uh, the last music director that we had was Stephen Jerome and how talented Stephen was on this piano and in a microphone and had a choir going here. He even had him up in rows. I'm just telling you, he was gifted. But it was our Stephen Jerome that was first in Houston and started that gospel choir at Resurrection MCC that is still going today. And even though Stephen has passed on to his reward and glory, there is still remnants of Stephen going around. And we had that connection with Reverend Gibbs as well, um, that her partner Cassandra was leading. While she was up preaching, her partner was up leading uh, the gospel choir in Houston. We're all connected, aren't we? Amen. We're all connected, and a lot more closely than I think some of us know. Yep. But she, she started our sermon series of Songs of the Ages with the Song of Mary. But prior to that... Prior to Mary being told that she, uh, excuse me, for Mary going to Elizabeth, her cousin's house, we don't hear very much about it. We didn't hear very much about it last week because it's the, really the story of two women talking to each other about their, their coming uh, babies. But we didn't hear from Zachariah last week. You know why we didn't hear from Zachariah? Because as Kelly just told us, he had a a, a mute spirit put on him. He had been silenced by the angels. I think the scripture may tell it better than I can tell it. So I want to read it to you. If we back up a few scriptures, uh, a few verses, excuse me, from the scripture that was read today. I want to start at verse 11 in the same chapter. By the way, Zechariah is a priest and he's, got, he's on temple duty among all the priests that day. He is at, at the temple. People are outside praying. He's taking their prayers in to the temple, into the Holy of Holies, to present their prayers before God, to present their requests before God. He is a holy man, a man of God, 
and he goes in the temple to share other people's prayers with God, and then this happens while he's inside. All at once an angel from the Lord appeared to Zechariah at the right side of the altar. Zechariah was confused and afraid when he saw the angel. But the angel told him, don't be afraid, Zechariah. God has heard your prayers. Isn't it wonderful that he went in there to take other people's prayers, but the angel said, I've heard your prayers in the midst of this. Your wife Elizabeth will have a son, and you must name him John. His birth will make you very happy, and many people will be glad. Your son will be a great servant of the Lord. He must never drink wine or beer. And the power of the Holy Spirit will be with him from the time he is born. Think about that for a second. Think about your own birth for a second. I'm coming back to that. John will lead many people in Israel to turn back to the Lord their God. He will go ahead of the Lord with the same power and spirit that Elijah, one of the greatest prophets of all times, with, and the spirit that Elijah had. And because of John, parents will be more thoughtful of their children. And people who now disobey God... I'm going to have to switch gears here. will begin to think as they ought to. Well, there's something we all need to take. People will start to think as they ought to. That is how John will get people ready for the Lord. Zechariah said to the angel, Well, how will I know this is going to happen? My wife and I are both very old. And the angel said, I am Gabriel, God's servant, and I was sent to tell you this good news. There's a but coming. You have not believed what I have said, so you will not be able to say a thing until all this happens. But everything will take place when it is supposed to. Y'all hear that now. Somebody needed that moment. Somebody needed that word. But everything will take place when it is supposed to. The crowd was waiting for Zechariah and kept wondering why he was staying so long in the temple. When he did come out, he could not speak, and they knew he had seen a vision. He motioned to them with his hands and did not say a thing. Now we're going to fast forward. Remember last week, then is when Mary finds out that she is with child. Elizabeth is already with child. And then Mary goes to see Elizabeth to give her the good news that she has, not realizing that her cousin is already pregnant herself. And far enough along that the baby is kicking, we know it's at least five months because the scripture says after that that Mary hung around with Elizabeth for the next five months. So at least five months. You kids heard that while ago? Maybe not nine months you have to stay quiet. But Zechariah was quiet, could not speak for at least five months. At least five. Now I know that's harder for some of us than it is for others. But five months is a hard time for anybody who knows how to speak, not to speak. Eight days. Eight days after that Elizabeth and Zechariah's child was born. Eight days later, they take him to the temple to follow the rituals of the Jews at that time. And they have to name him on the eighth day. And it's typical in scriptural days in those biblical times for the child to be named, if it's a male child, it's named after its father. And especially since his father was a priest, he should have been named Zechariah, and whatever number goes after that, after all the other Zechariah. But the angel had told them his name will be John. Now, I don't know about you, but that's not a very difficult name. Is it? Zechariah to John. Doesn't sound to anything alike. But this is what he's been told. 
he's going to have a different name, a unique name, and one that doesn't carry the human father's side. A little queer or peculiar, you might say. As Zechariah goes in, the people say, well, you've got to name your child. What are you going to name him? Is it going to be Zechariah? And, of course, Zechariah can't say anything. But Elizabeth speaks up and says, no, 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 we're not naming him Zechariah. We're naming him John. Because she believed. She believed what the angel said to her husband months before. She believed the word of prophecy over her child before he was even born. She recognized the anointing that would be on her child. She was blessed, just as Mary was blessed. And so the people said, well, Zechariah, what do you say about that? Aren't your feelings hurt? What's, wrong? What's up with this? What, what do you mean you're not going to name him Zechariah? And Zechariah asked for a writing tablet, and he wrote down that his name would be John, and listen to this. So they motioned to Zechariah to find out what he wanted to name his son. And Zechariah asked for a writing tablet, then he wrote, his name is John. And everyone was amazed. And notice this, right away, Zechariah started speaking and praising God. He got his voice back when he followed the message of, of the prophetic word that came to him at least five months before then. That's where we get the song that he immediately sang right after that. That's what this sermon is built on and what you've already heard a great message about. He got his voice back and he began to praise God not only for his son, John, but for Mary's son, that would be the Christ, because he remembered the words of the prophecy. I bet he wrote down the words of the prophecy, everything he could remember while he wasn't able to speak during those few months, because that's what happens to me. I try to write down everything the Holy Spirit speaks to me, because there are days when I can't hear God speaking. When I'm not quiet enough sometimes, maybe that's why God wakes me up at 4.30 in the morning to talk to me, yep. and sometimes lets me go back to sleep, sometimes not. <laughs> yep. But I write it down because there are those days, you know, life is like this, and our emotions are like this, and welcome to it, you know, world, this is what life is about. We have our ups and downs, and on those down times, Sometimes I need to go back and retrieve those messages that God spoke to me on a different day. Say, I remember what you said, God. I remember what you said. And I'm going to hold you to it. You promised this. I'm going to hold you to it. And I bet Zechariah went back and pulled out all those things he had written down that God had spoken through the angel. That his son, his son, John, would go out and prepare the community, prepare the church folks, prepare anybody that would listen for the Lord coming after him. He would prepare their hearts. Y'all awfully quiet this morning. <laughs> I want to say that up front. Y'all are mighty quiet. And I will tell you, I've been spirited all week, so I'm just telling you, I'm wound up. So if I have a Holy Ghost moment, just keep, you know, watch on if you want or join in. But I just want to tell you that, that he understood that his child was to go out and had a role to play in what the Christ would do in the world. And this is epic. This is not some small task. This is not some little thing. Oh, by the way, your child's going to be this. Or your child's going to be that. Or your, your child is going to help prepare hearts and change minds and help people think the way they ought to think. Amen. That is no small task. Those of us that have been school teachers, we know. You know <laughs> if you are a parent, you know. 
It is not always to teach other people what they are supposed to be thinking because they're people and you want to respect other people's thoughts and our differences. But sometimes, as Joyce Meyer says, there's some stinking thinking going on. <laughs> and sometimes it takes people a while. I even posted something about that this week about some, of, some, some people in my past that believe one way and they just refuse to see any other way. They just have a wall built up. They're not going to see it because they have the truth, and the truth is inside this little wall, and you're not going to change their minds. And I used to be inside that wall, and I used to be saying the same thing. I just want you to know there's some fractures in that wall. There's some, I thought, I thought they were bad things. I thought the fractures in the wall were for evil things to come in. What I found out, they were ways of escape for us to get out. Amen. They were ways of escape for us to get out. See, walls can have way many more meanings than what we think. Not just to keep us walled in. There may be ways of escape to help us get out. Oh my goodness. He is going to show people and prepare their hearts and help them be ready to accept that the prophecies of old, the prophecies of our forefathers and our foremothers, the things we have prepared, waiting for another prophet, a world changer, a life awakening situation, he's going to help people to be able to receive that one, his own cousin. When he comes, when it's his time to come, <coughs> he will be anointed. He will be anointed from his very birth, from the very moment of birth, his anointing will flow on him. He is chosen of God to do this work, prepare the way of the Christ, would fulfill a purpose in life, and would have, listen to this, would have this, I'm quoting scriptures, would have the power and spirit of the greatest prophet of old, Elijah, on him. Amen. Amen. He would have, and, and, if, and if that doesn't scare you, if that doesn't make you excited, if he went on, the, the angel went on and said, he would have the power of the Holy Spirit on him and in him from the very moment of his birth. Now, in every story we we get to identify with who we want to in the story, right? Sometimes you read a story and you identify with this character and some. In this story today, you are John. Your name is John. Doesn't matter what your gender is. For the just live with the metaphor for a second. My name is John, and your name, whoever is here, I already pray about this. I already prayed about who's going to be watching this online live and who's going to see it later. I'm just going to tell you that whoever is listening to this, your name is John for name. You know why? Because our parents, our parents are the ones who received the prophecies of what our purpose would be in life. What we would do in our lives. Don't get me wrong. I know some of you did not have a pleasant childhood and did not have great parents. At least seemingly great parents. Some of you still don't. Some of you don't even speak to them. I get it. I understand that. That doesn't mean the prophetic word did not come to them. It may be because they were listening to other voices or talking too much and they didn't hear. Because you said God is always speaking whether we're listening or not. Amen? God is always speaking. The Spirit is alive. Amen. The Spirit is alive and the Spirit is not mute. The Spirit is not struck with being able to stay silent unless we silence the Spirit in our own lives, in our own spirits. You say, well, you just don't know how they treated me. No, I don't. And I've heard some of your stories, and I, I, I just dread, you know, it's like, it's all I can do to stay, they're still God's child, they're still God's child, they're still God's child. Yeah. Lord, change their minds, change their hearts, and forgive them for what they did. 
Many of us have those stories. Some of us don't have those stories. Some of us can, you know, write books about how wonderful our parents were. I, I've had words of prophecy over how the Spirit moved on my mom and how her prayers were answered through me. And I regret that she did not get to live but 10 years of my life before she was taken. She didn't get to see this. She didn't get to see that I'm carrying the message and that I carried it long before I had a pulpit to carry it. Did you hear that? Amen. It's not about carrying it up here. Amen. Every one of us are John. I'm not Jesus. I'm John. I'm John today. Today I'm John. Today you're John. Some of our parents can't even believe we're God's children. Amen. Some of them don't even believe we can be saved. That we can give our lives to God and they can't figure out how we get up on a Sunday morning and show up in a church. And some of them don't want to walk in this building. <laughs> and to them, I just say, you don't know what you're missing. Amen. Yeah. You're missing a lot of love because if you come in here, we're going to love you. Amen. Yeah. We may not like you sometimes, but we're going to love you. <laughs> We might not like your stinking thinking and we're going to try to help you think the way you want to because we're John. Some of them, by the way, the Spirit told me this and I, I was like, wow, that's pretty powerful. i got to share that. Some of them have been, you wonder why they don't say anything to you at all about it. They just ignore some things in your life. They just pretend it's not the way that... You know why they do it? I won't tell you why. Because God spoke to me last night and told me why. Because they're Zechariah. They've been struck silent. They've been struck silent. They don't know what to make of it because they didn't believe the word of the Lord when the word of the Lord came to them to tell them what you are supposed to be. What your purpose in life is that you are actually from day to day living, living proof of the Holy Spirit alive in this world today. Each one of us is alive and well in the Spirit today. You're John. The person wrote it. You are John today. You're John. You, from your birth, have been anointed to say, prepare the way of the Lord. Prepare the way of the Lord. You say, well, does that mean I'm supposed to go out and tell everybody? You know, I'm supposed to walk up to strangers in the, in the Walmart and say, excuse me, sir, do you know the Lord? Because I'm going to go ahead and tell you, there are going to be some people that ain't going to receive that word. <laughs> the deal is, it's the way you live your life in front of them. It's not so much what you say to people, it's how you react to things. And if you react badly, then you go back and say, I reacted badly. I need to correct that. I've had to do that a lot more because <laughs> I react. I've had to go back and say, mm. maybe that's why the Holy Spirit woke me up on Friday morning at 5 o'clock in the morning and gave me a one-word prophetic word. The Holy Spirit said, stop. With an exclamation point, I saw it when the Holy Spirit spoke it. It had an exclamation point. <laughs> the Holy Spirit says, stop. You say, well, stop what? I don't, I don't even need to tell you all the things I needed to stop. I needed to stop a lot of the cycles of thinking in my head. This is one of the busiest, most chaotic seasons. A season of Advent that we're supposed to be sitting quietly and waiting for the Christ child. But we're so busy, busy, busy that we forget what the season is. We forget to check in with the angels. We forget to listen to the words of prophecy 
that are com coming, the, the message of the Spirit. Here we are today in this holy moment. In this holy moment, right with expectation, telling others all during the week with our very the very testimony of our lips and with our very lives that the ways of Jesus, the message of Jesus, the teachings of Jesus are alive and well today. Those same callings that were on John's life are on our lives. <clears throat> we have the power and the spirit of Elijah on us. Ooh, that makes me happy. <laughs> we not only have the spirit of Elijah, we have the Holy Spirit yeah, alive yeah. in us. Not just wrapped around us, even though that's a good place to be but in us and speaking out from us and living out from us. And we've had it since our birth. Yes. Amen. 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 Since our birth. We have the same message that John had to take to a hurting, chaotic world during this Advent season. Prepare the way of the Lord. We don't have to use those words. Those are ancient words. Those are spiritualized religion words. We can find new ways to say those things. To say, prepare your hearts. In this season, there's a Christ child coming. There's a Christ that's awakening in us. Oh, Amen. children, the Spirit is on us and around us and in us and lives out through us. Hallelujah. <coughs> Friday night, um, I had the privilege of hosting in my home. Like, you know, last week I had Sean and, and, uh, uh, in my home and, and then had dinner and spent some time with Reverend uh, Gibbs on Saturday evening along with our board of directors and spouses. And um, then this past Friday night, in all of my busyness and all of my chaos, our Interim moderator of our denomination, Reverend Michelle Brown, was in town. You know, she's building a house in Louisiana, where she's from, on the little on the other side of, of Lafayette. And she was coming through, and she said, "I want to stop in and visit with you." And I said, well, "Come on, you can you can spend the night if you want." And she did. We spent several hours sitting at the table with her, just telling me positive things that are happening in our denominations, the things that's happening behind the scenes, the direction that we want to go in our future. And I was just sitting there absorbing, just absorbing all of that positive energy. You might call it positive energy. You may call it spirit. You might call it Holy Spirit. You might call it anointing. You might call it holy unction. See, I told you there are lots of languages, lots of words for the same thing. I was absorbing every bit of that positive moment, that Holy Spirit that was flowing through her. How the Spirit's leading us as a denomination. And she kept saying, she said, I think somewhere along the way, while we are known as the social justice church, I don't want us to get so far away from the original message that we forget we're a <laughs> spiritual people. Amen. That this is a spiritual denomination, that we are here not just to be accepted, we are here not to just be tolerated, we are not even just here so that whatever denomination we grew up in, or whatever religion we grew up in, can have meetings and decide whether we are worthy to be God's child or not. They did that for me. Yep. They decided something differently than God decided. Yep. Oh, well. They're lost. Yep. Amen. We are not here, John. We are not here to merely be put up as a token and say, well, we can write this in. 
But don't try to be overbearing and don't try to be your whole self somewhere else. And then not let you come up for communion. When God has set a table for all of us. Amen. For all of us. Yes. For all of us. Yes. All of us. Yes. And I'm glad to know that I'm living in a denomination. It may be young and small compared to the Baptists and the Methodists and certainly our mother church, the Catholics. But I'm glad still today I don't know of another place where we can truly go and be our 100% selves and not just be accepted and tolerated and put up with, but be celebrated. Yes. Yes. Amen. Amen. Thank you. I celebrate you all of you. who are named John today in our metaphor. So what are we left with? In our busyness and our, our chaos, well, the Spirit says stop. In the middle of our busyness, in the middle of our chaos, the Spirit says stop. Know who you are. Know whose you are. Know that the Holy Spirit is on you and the Holy Spirit the Holy Spirit has been on every single person in this room and every person watching. The Holy Spirit has been on you and in you and had a purpose for you since your birth. Amen. And now it's up to us. Be our true 100 percent selves. Yes. Yes. To go out there with the message of Zechariah giving praises for the calling that we are for people to prepare the way. We are called to prepare the way. Declaring as John, prepare the way. Of the Lord. He's coming. He's coming. Yes. Yes. Again, thank you for watching our worship message video on YouTube. Subscribe to our YouTube channel to get notified of other video posts. You can also watch our worship service in its entirety by going to facebook.com slash mccbr. You can watch us live on Facebook at 11 a.m. Central every Sunday. Visit our webpage at mccbr.org where you can find our calendar of events as well as other information about our church and our denomination. Like our Facebook page so you can be notified of our other live events. Thank you again, and may you have a blessed week. Whether here and now, or another time, not even height or depth, whether strong or weak, in the face of the future, or the powers that be, you are not separated.